So what are the keys to automation within NitroCell? First of all, your path to success actually depends on not doing something specifically, and that is never try to do exactly what a user does. This has caused more pain and frustration, and most automations fail because of this approach. Automation is not about specifically recording what a user is doing, meaning which buttons are they pushing, what right clicks are they doing, and what actions are they changing. It is about the, the, uh, the flow of information, but not the specific steps that a user takes to get to the end result. So we want you to focus much more on the flow of the data, meaning I want to send a value to Creo, and then I want to force it to regenerate to get my results. It's a much cleaner approach. But that really hinges on one of the big automation no-nos within Creo, and that is you have these capabilities of I want things to react and respond accordingly, and I have some instructions that I want to collect and then process and then make those happen. That relationship is typically very close, meaning you're updating relation files and you're setting relations between parts, assemblies, and drawings so that everything kind of automatically updates and the right views show up and the right features show up and so on and so forth. The problem is that when you put all of this within the Creo side, meaning 100% of the logic goes that direction, you really create a maintenance nightmare. So it's painful to create, manage, and share, and understand for other people down the road why things are working or why they aren't working. The, even harder to make changes to it. So our suggestion is to skip this process and start to bring some sense to the things. So we want you to focus on what do I want the results to be, meaning the geometry, the drawing, so on and so forth. And then what do I want the execution process to be, meaning how do I collect data, what is the logic to pre, uh, produce the instructions that are going to occur, and then how do I get that across to uh, Creo to make that happen? To do that, we recommend that you do not put 100% of the logic and the data within your Creo environment. For example, you, your Creo environment is going to have the basics like parameters, dimensions, pro program, which is a very capable and, and useful tool. And you want to have that stuff there, but you want to move your instructions for what's occurring to the other environment. So your automation process is documented outside of that, which means that your models are going to be more autonomous and reusable across different designs and more shareable. Typically, we've seen that 20% of your execution logic will exist in one environment and 80% will exist in the other. Why? Well, it depends on your automation. Sometimes you're going to have more on the Creo side than you will in Excel and vice versa. But fundamentally, this is a good rule of thumb meaning you're going to want to keep logic very specific to like, for example, a pro program that's going to turn on and off of features or components. And then you're going to keep why they're occurring or why they're being turned on and off outside of that environment so that you have more control, more visibility, and it's easier to understand. When you move on to the next um, step of tying those together, that's where NitroCell comes in. NitroCell basically says, do stuff, read things from the Excel document, pass them over to Creo, force them to regenerate, maybe get some data out of Creo, bring it back to evaluate what the current state of information is, and then go from there. So these two things together actually produce what we call a master model. And it's a master of models, meaning geometry, and also your knowledge for how they are to react and respond. This keeps things very autonomous, which is very important. Okay, so up to this point, we've been talking about sending data back and forth between an Excel document and your Creo session. That will produce the result you're looking for. But what happens if you want to send that data to somebody else, like a vendor or another department or another user within the company? Typically, in this particular case, you have to include everything with it so that they can actually bring it up and regenerate properly. Well, we actually solve that problem by creating something called the NitroCell release process. Basically what it does is it does one final pass of your automation over to Creo, forces the regeneration correctly, make sure everything's according to what you expect. Then as a final step, it goes through each of those models that you identify and cleans them out, removes any unused features, any unused components, and purges all the relations that you want to get rid of so that Every, every model is as autonomous as possible, and then it backs everything up into something called a release folder. That release folder is what you can then use to share the results of the automation with your PDM, your PLM system, or send it to a vendor, or whatever you need to do. So then the next big question that comes up is, okay, this is wonderful, but what do I do with all this stuff? How, where does it go, and how do I deal with it? 
Well, the masters that you create, meaning the Excel workbook, the parts, the assemblies, and the drawings, those things all are very important. They're the corporate knowledge, and corporate knowledge will have version changes just like everything else will. Your release process will generate autonomous models, meaning parts, assemblies, and drawings. All of that stuff typically goes into the PDM and PLM system, and you could do exactly the same with your master versions of your uh, CAD geometry as well as your knowledge or your logic that controls all of that, meaning the Excel document. So all of this stuff can go into the PDM and PLM system and be managed independent of each other. So your knowledge can have changes over time, just as your models do that you're using within these processes. So this is where it all goes. This is how it all fits together. And from here on out, it's all about just how do we use this tool? So enjoy the rest of the videos and thanks for watching.